Tech bringing you an extensive coverage of the finance, finance minister's appearance in parliament today to uh, do a media review of the budget for 2019. I've been joined by Professor John Gachi, is the head of finance department of the University of Cape Coast. Prof, thank you very much for your time. Thank and you. Madame Juliana uh, Brown of Faris, also uh, a key leader of uh, market women and uh, private sector people. Madam, welcome. Thank you very much for your time. But let's listen now to the finance minister, Mr. Ken Oforieta, when he appeared in parliament talking about support for private sector because that's where we want to take the conversation to now. Finance minister, on your screens. Mr. Speaker, for our government, support for the private sector is a top priority. Uh, efforts to improve the business environment were duly recognized in the 2019 World Bank Ease of Doing Business report in which our position improved from 120 to 114 out of 190 countries. This is just the beginning as we strive to continually improve the business climate in Ghana. We can and will do much better. We can and will do much better. Prof. Have we done much better than we, we were doing back then? Well, I think some efforts have been put uh, in place mm. uh, in terms of speeding up the processing of registration. Mm. Uh, even though when you have interaction uh, with uh, the Registrar General Office, mm -hmm. there are some hinges, but mm. some attempts have been made uh, that actually have to uh, uh, be monitored mm. to work. Um, we are also enhancing um, integration of electronic uh, platform into our uh, processes, right. uh, uh, institutions and the rest, mm -hmm. uh, except that while we are talking about uh, the strengthening of institutions, mm -hmm. it seems that uh, we are experiencing some interference in the working of some institutions mm -hmm. uh, which are critical. For example? For example, GRA, mm. uh, that is not good for the environment because that breeds uh, discontent, mm. uh, it demotivates, uh, it generates indiscipline, that uh, generates what we call revenue risk, mm. and the nation will be the one that will suffer. So we will need to work on that. So clearly some efforts have been. Uh, put in the, place. The, the overall effect of this on the private sector, the, the support they're supposed to get, uh, are people now opening up for business, are people now employing, because unemployment is a huge problem. And this budget that was read says that it was going to be a, created a stronger economy for jobs and prosperity. Has it been able to achieve that in terms of people getting jobs to do? Well, I think what we are experiencing now is job intervention and uh, not very clear, sound jobs. Okay. Uh, I think when we, we are discussing the 2019 budget, it, it becomes very important because mm. the 2019 budget inculcates in it the ideals of the Sustainable Development Goals. Okay. Uh, go one, talk about no poverty. Mm. Okay. And one of the goals talk about sound jobs. Um, uh, one of them talks about clean water mm. and sanitation. Uh, all these things are, are, are there. Uh, therefore, our aim is sound job. Mm. It's not merely about job intervention. Right. Because, for example, if uh, uh, I'm looking for a job and I'm 30 years and uh, I get appointment from, uh, let's say, a GRA, mm. uh, the understanding is that if I'm willing to uh, uh, work within the rules of GRA, I'll work for another 30 years. Right. Uh, to, to, to get to retirement unless exactly. I get another opportunity that mm. I found uh, uh, more useful. Mm. So if you give me a job and tell me that it is three years after that, what happens? You are expecting that the private sector to absorb me. Mm. But the question is why is the strength of the private sector? The private sector every year keep on uh, telling us mm. what is their main problem. Mm. They talk about taxation, mm. they talk about utility costs and mm. its efficiency. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, these are the things they, they actually talk about. Right. But it seems to me they, they also talk about discrimination in terms of uh, 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 incentives given to uh, foreign direct investors mm. as opposed to domestic investors. Okay. So these are their problems. But to a large extent, 
we've not been able to address them. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons is that our blueprint for uh, the private sector mm -hmm. is politically tainted. Right. So it is not sustainable over a long period of time. So every political party comes with what he thinks addresses we'll, we'll be the private sector. And if you read the 2018 budget and 2019 budget, that is something they're talking about, uh, incentive to the private sector. Mm -hmm. Ask the modality of selecting the, the, the kind of private sector involved, mm -hmm. how much is given, uh, who qualifies, mm -hmm. how do how they, they qualify, qualify, what a report as to the effect of mm -hmm. the incentive they receive. We don't get to the know sector, anything. The chosen sector and everything. Ex ex exactly. Why we focus on a particular sector. All those things don't come to the public domain. So uh, our attention to the public uh, private sector uh, is limited. So I think we need, if we want the private sector to shoulder employment mm. uh, issues, then the state also needs to invest in the private sector. Mm -hmm. uh, you invest in the private sector by providing a congenial environment for the private sector to thrive. Mm. You provide uh, support in terms of uh, the development of skills and capacity for the private sector. And uh, this will be done on a sustainable basis mm. and uh, with uh, transparency. When we do that, the private sector will pick up. Mm. Uh, I can tell you that there are a lot of people with entrepreneurial ideas, mm. innovative ideas, but the best they can do for now is to go and register their business. Mm. But they don't have access to funds to, 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 to uh, execute their ideas. Mm. Uh, if, even there are people, young people around, who have uh, some project from government, but how to raise initial money mobilized to start those start projects, the they cannot. So these are the broader uh, uh, situation that we find ourselves. We, uh, uh, we have an undulating uh, path mm. when it comes to interest calls and access to credit. Right. Uh, uh, from 2018, by June 2018, uh, Treasury Bill, of course, that benefit government was around 13.3, but it has gone up again, right. telling you that the benchmark for the short-term market has also gone up. It's so gone up. credit is surging, credit cost is going back to 16, going up. rising up. If you again. look at uh, the uh, economic uh, and financial data provided by Bank of Ghana just last week, mm. it also shows that. Uh, 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 the rate for our, our bonds, mm. especially the five and seven year bonds, are going up. Mm. So that that those are the things we should work on. Okay. Access to credit and credit costs have undulating path for the country. Right. So these are the things that the private sector needs. Mm. So uh, if we don't do that, uh, we will not get the private sector to deliver. Okay. So if you give job uh, 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 to people for three years and then they go That's into uh, NAPCO to go into transit and we should learn because you see national service has been with us for a long time mm. the national service accommodate people for one year they go into that is the transition so they exit mm. when they exit they enter into the space of unemployment right so if if the private sector is not incentivized well given the, 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 the I mean what it takes to to, mm. to, to help the country uh, what we are going to experience again is that we will exit the NAFCO people mm. into the space of unemployment. We'll come back to talk about how to incentivize the private sector. But, madam, let me come to you, Auntie Julie. Yeah, okay. okay, you speak your English now. <laughs> 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 From the perspective of the Makala woman, yeah. uh, tell me, Finance Minister says we can and we will do better to support the private sector. Do you feel the support? Well, thank you very much for the wonderful opportunity given us for us to also share what we have. Well, I, I and my people in the market or in the informal sector is waiting for today's presentation. Mm -hmm. Because I thought that because they said the informal sector workers, our educational background is low, mm -hmm. that whenever things like this is going to happen, we should have a little education about right. it. At least if there is a van going around talking about it a bit so that those who can read or hear some good English to also mm -hmm. explain it to the members mm -hmm. on the ground. But there is no education going on so that people in the informal sector will understand it very well. Right. I all the time talk about education, education for the informal sector. Mm -hmm. 
if a tax has been reduced and the market woman goes to a shop to buy something and the price is still the same, mm. will not understand what you say the taxes has been reduced or something. Mm. So I'll always say that we need education. Those who are in charge of informal sector okay. should visit us. Mm. They should let us know who is really responsible for informal sector workers mm. so that when we have an issue, we'll be able to channel that issue there for a solution. Up until now, you are not feeling there. We kind don't of know. We'll do better. Yes. We don't know who is really responsible for the informal sector market women. Okay. We are not talking about the farmers. We are not talking about the fishermen. Mm. They have their ministry. They have where. When they have issues, they will channel that issue. But you don't know where to go. We don't know where to go. We knock on so many doors. When you go, they said, go to this place. Then you will not get any good answer. Mm. We want to see that any government that will come take the informal market traders very seriously. Okay. Give us an office or a desk. Mm. Whether at the gender ministry, whether at AMA, mm. whether the trade ministry, who is mm. really responsible for informal market trader. That's understand the person's english Th there's no desk like that for there's you. there's no desk not not anywhere finance not ministry, anywhere trade we've ministry, heard about gender ministry there's no desk for yeah. informal sector wow. workers so whenever we have an issue or we want any explanation we knock on so many doors mm. that did not answer our issues mm. we always fall into traps but we pay our daily tolls mm. our quarterly tolls right. our yearly tolls right. we pay the tax people locate us at where we sell mm. So we should be recognized and be respected. Do you feel the impact of these contributions you make to the national economy on your business? Well, you we pay your toll every day. We you pay know, all the time. When you're bringing things from the market, you pay. And, yes. And every day you have your tickets to show. But do you feel it? We don't know where the money goes. We don't know what they do with that money. That particular money needs to be explained to us that your money that we'll be collecting from you we will use for this or that or that so that when we want any answer we can go there to ask right we pay all that mm. because every day there is the ticket collectors who comes to the market to collect it mm. Mm. quarterly we pay the yearly to the ama locators and mm. they come to collect it what have they been doing with that money mm. because sometimes some of the market are not conducive if you go there to sit and sell you'll not be happy if they ask excuse me to say if i ask your wife to go and sit there to sell the person will not go. But mm. because we are used to that, that's where we find ourselves. Right. We want the place to be conducive. Mm. Let them tell us what they've been doing with our money. So that whenever we need something, we'll be able to approach it and get the better answer. Okay. She's not feeling it and they want a desk to, to talk about it. We'll take a break. When we return, we'll talk about how to incentivize the private sector to uh, assist government in the forward march of our economic status. The Guta has been up in arms with their Nigerian counterparts in Accra. I'm sure that will also take center stage because we'll ask Prof about it and see where we go from there after the break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. My guest in studio, uh, Professor Gachi of the University of uh, uh, Cape Coast and also Madame Juliana Brown of Fari is uh, the leader for the macular women uh, traders and also the informal sector, uh, sees her as one of their main, main advocates. Prof, welcome back. Thank you very much. And uh, let's talk now about how to incentivize the private sector because the government has often said, oh, the private sector is the engine of growth. Uh, we depend on the private sector to do a lot of the things that we're doing. But the private sector says, they are not incentivized enough. For example, if you look on the page 22 of the BNFT, the AGI is, is talking about some eight or nine things, 10, I think, that they are expecting to hear in, in today's review. They're talking about reduction in benchmark values. They are talking about uh, street levy, 2.5 VAT, and the get fund. They are talking about luxury tax vehicle. They are talking about the uh, ACFA uh, agreement. They are talking about fumigation levy, plenty. So the demand from private sector is always huge. How can government incentivize them so that we can grow faster and quicker? Well, I think uh, it's a matter of uh, looking at what we want to get again from the continuous existence of the private sector. Mm. So that's why I use the word investment in the private sector. Mm. Uh, because some of these things have been part of the revenue flow 
for a long time a great problem for government if mm. you are going to uh, reduce some of the levies okay. or remove the levy. Mm. So what it means is that you are uh, actually removing some revenue source. Mm -hmm. And uh, for our government doesn't have uh, immediate uh, uh, alternative. Mm. Because generally, the government doesn't really remove taxes. Okay. What government does is that if, you, if it mm. thinks that uh, if I remove this uh, tax mm. or levy, I can compensate it with uh, increment somewhere or enhancements uh, somewhere. Okay. Uh, so because if you do that, you chop off revenue source. So that mm. is a challenge from government point of view. Okay. But the point is that we are all looking up to the private sector mm. to operate effectively, mm -hmm. uh, add value to our pr production, okay. uh, uh, to get more value mm. in terms of uh, revenue. And when we want to export, we expect in the private sector to uh, create avenue for job, uh, our engagement of our people mm -hmm. to work. So if these are the things we are expecting, so mm -hmm. there is a need to engage the private sector, okay. at least to deal with some of the issues that can be dealt with within the immediate, medium to mm. long, long term. Okay. That is how it's supposed to be. Then secondly, uh, on, on the part of government, mm. government is expected to manage the economy well, Okay. to reflect on lower interest rate, to reflect on access to credit, mm. and to ensure efficient and uh, uh, acceptable level of taxes mm. to the private sector. That is what is expected from government. And okay. government should manage the economy in such a way that there should be continuous flow of opportunity to be taken mm. advantage of by mm. the private sector. I think that is how we should go about it. Mm. Then. The, because our private sector, uh, in terms of people who have ideas okay. or innovative ideas they mm. want to uh, put into uh, uh, marketable products and services, mm. are increasing. The only limitation is access to credit or funding to execute that. Okay. Uh, so there is a need uh, to, for government to benchmark the incentives given to foreign direct investment. Mm. Uh, as opposed to the incentive given to domestic investment. Right. And when that is done, there will be some parity mm. and our private sector can enhance their, their operations. We'll, we'll talk about, about that a lot more, but let's bring in the informal sector. <clears throat> Auntie Julie will tell you her people pay taxes. Uh, and she's made that point strongly over and over again. But I have had occasion to ask Mr. Kofin T at the time he was GRA boss that, look, plumbers, masons, carpenters, those artisans, uh, some earn 80 Ghana cities a day, some 120, some 100 cities a day, all of it tax-free. And I asked them how they were hoping to rope in that portion of the informal sector. So it cushions Auntie Julie's people, it cushions you and I, whose taxes are deducted from source so that they can all come in because the uh, statistical services said that some 27% of us are taking care of the 73% that is left. The balance, even with the digitization of our taxation regime, is, is not really yielded enough in bringing the informal sector. Why is, why is it difficult? Well, I think uh, our orientation about the informal sector will have to change. Mm. See, we need to decompose the informal sector into two segments. Okay. Now, the segment that you cannot easily get to task and the segment that you can easily, mm. in fact, they are available with you. Okay. Uh, let us not treat the informal <laughs> sector as if it's an underground economic uh, system mm. or they are operating the shadow economy. Is that what we're doing? That, that's our orientation. Okay. So we behave as if we don't know where people operating the informal sector are. Mm. Uh, we behave as if the informal sector, those who are operating, uh, they are, I mean, their level of education mm. is just like in the past. Meanwhile, when you go to Abosu Okai, okay. you go to Makola, mm. there are a lot of educated people now in the market. Right. In fact, uh, for some people, it's family business. Mm. Educated ones have taken over from their they are uh, they are older mm. mothers and uh, uh, parents, uncles and aunties, but we keep on behaving as if the informal sector. There are people who are not educated; they cannot keep record, 
and, and all those things. Mm. We should decompose it into two. Okay. Then those that we are interfacing from time to time, they go to collect tools. Okay. They go to collect levies. Mm. So we know them. Okay. Right. So let us now pay particular attention to those ones. Mm. Then we can deal with them, invest in them. I'm using the word investment okay. because I explained it right. earlier. On. earlier. Mm. Then they can enhance their productivity mm. and contribute more. Uh, when we do that, then we are formalizing them. But when we sit in our offices mm. and believe that they are uneducated people, mm -hmm. they don't keep proper records. Okay. Uh, in fact, uh, we cannot task them. Right. Uh, when we do that, we are not addressing the issue. Okay. Now, secondly, mm -hmm. you see, all these uh, artisan and co medicines that you talk about, mm. there is a way of dealing with them. In other countries, especially, uh, if you go to the Nordic countries where uh, their commitment to paying tasks is very high, mm. uh, which is also matched with the delivery of public service. Uh, uh, to the people mm -hmm. is also very efficient and broad based mm -hmm. in terms of efficient public uh, uh, transport system, trains, uh, uh, rail system, mm -hmm. uh, uh, healthcare, education, all those things. So they see benefit in, in, in paying taxes. Right. So their tax rates are very high, mm -hmm. but it is not of concern because after all, if you're not working, you have a minimum stipend to be paid right. uh, to get your accommodation, social protection, social protection all those things are very real, but not politically tainted one mm. that we have, that we have a free SSS booth, free mm. uniform, uh, free uh, and, uh, those and, things. Mm. Then we start, then some few people in the country are enjoying, then we are shouting at the top of the roof that mm. uh, uh, that social intervention, social protection, etc. Why should social protection, is that how they implement it? Mm. In, uh, how can you be implementing one social protection over 10 years, mm. but it does not cover majority of the people, but you are touting? That's, uh, that's questionable. Uh, that's questionable, you know? That's not how other people mm. do it. So when you do all these things, then you introduce a robot, a robust platform, mm. like a national identification system, in fact, in other countries, national identification system is housed in the TAS office mm. because it has implication for taxation. Right. So you take the national identification card, it becomes the primary platform mm. on which every other card will thrive. So, for example, if you are going to school, your, your ID number in the school is predicated on <laughs> your national identification mm. number. Mm. Your bank account, same. In fact, uh, when you take a, a card, uh, I mean a payment card from a, a, a shop mm. to be buying on credit, etc., it's linked to that. Okay. So if you take a loan from a bank or you buy from a shop, you cannot pay uh, over uh, beyond the credit period. You are, you are, you are downgraded blackmail. Mm. Wherever you go, the moment they tap your, uh, your number, you are flagged. You are flagged. You're, you're flagged. Now, why is that possible? Because they also very fast uh, ensure near cashless economic activity. Okay. So when that is done, mm. if you come and work, sorry, let me use mm. another, if somebody comes to work for me, mm. and by day he's earning, let's say 120, and remember, that 120 is higher than the average person working in the office. Absolutely. That's, that's, that was my point, yeah. that uh, the masons and carpenters earn yeah. more than yeah. tie-wearing people. So if your mobile money platform is now uh, configured in such a way that it's predicated on your national ID, it is, it is clear that you have paid some money to somebody today. Right. It is clear that somebody has received some money. money. Okay. It is easy to, to track. So commitment to paying tasks by this group of people will be catered for by an effective rollout of national identification system, right. which integrates with uh, uh, the, the, the rest of the, okay. of, the, of the economy and our transaction. Most grateful. No, that is what we're supposed to be doing. Mm. But we are comfortable uh, saying that we have a problem. Mm. And this problem, remember when you were in school, Mm. They told you about this exactly. problem. Exactly. 
So are we a country that do not solve problems? <laughs> <laughs> Auntie Julie, let me come to you. Uh, from the perspective, again, of your women folk and the group that you lead, how must government incentivize you, uh, key members of the private sector, the engine of growth, to ensure that we are all growing very well and not have stunted growth? Okay, what, what I would say is um, the informal sector, 2014, 2015, mm. we were formalized at ILO. Okay. And uh, those authorities who were there, nobody from Ghana went. I went there through an NGO. Nobody from Ghana went? From the informal sector. Why? The local government people that I saw there were more than 25. Nobody from the informal sector. Government officials were government there. Government officials were but there. But the actual practitioners. Those who are supposed to be there to know what formalization is all about. Okay. So that we'll be doing our things like the former people. Right. Nobody from you Ghana. You not given a chance there. to go there. Yes. They left the office and they went without taking anybody from the informal sector. So when I find myself there, I spoke very well on behalf of informal sector Ghana. Wow. That gave me the opportunity to do the, the presentation at the podium, the okay. bigger podium. Okay. I was chosen. Because I was sad I didn't see any Ghanaian from the informal sector. Right. A country that the informal sector is 89%. Mm. And we were formalizing, and nobody from the informal sector was taken there did, to did go you, and Did you it. ask questions as to why you I were did. left behind? And what was the response? The response was that they didn't know who to take because the informal sector are members are many <laughs> but we have a lot of varied, uh, uh, different different markets mm. with their leaders you could have chosen those leaders to the ILO to go and represent Ghana right nobody an NGO that met me in Makola market invited me to ILO and I didn't shut my mouth I shared the experience the ideas I know whatever I know mm. 200 countries were there Moravia, Liberia, that had war, had mm. five women from the informal sector. So I made sure Ghana informal sector present was felt. What, what, what does it mean to have a formalized informal sector? You know, sometimes mm. when you go and you buy things, you don't collect your receipts. Right. You don't keep records. They say our, our educational background is low. Mm. That is why we collected issues from the various countries to present it at the ILO okay. for them to help us, the okay. former sector people to mm. help us mm. to discuss it. And if this thing is about informal sector and the, the economy that has 88% or 89% mm. workforce in the informal sector, people were not represented. Mm. It's very bad. I keep on saying that Ghana... The informal sector workers, our issues are not being addressed. They are not taking our issues how, how does seriously. government, what, what issues, let's take the issues one by one. What issues do you have? Prof has spoken about, you know, the taxation bid and how we can, you know, make it work. Now, you tell me from, from where you sit as leader of the informal sector, as leader of market women, tell me what issues do you have and how we can solve them so that we can grow very well. Yeah. The last time when they presented the, the, what was that? The budget. The budget. Mm. They were talking about GDP. Right. They were talking about a whole lot of big, big English mm. that the informal Inflation. sector doesn't understand. Mm. So if we are part of the economy, that we contribute our quota, we pay our daily tolls quarterly and yearly. Okay. What is wrong with the government taking some of that money to educate the informal sector? Okay, so education is one. You education said that is and information dissemination okay, too. Okay, great. The, what was the second one? The second. the second one is information dissemination. Okay. And then formalizing us, we need more education to know what formalization is all about. Okay. We took two weeks, sit in the call to mm. discuss it. And... 2014, 2015, no education went on from the previous government. But, but there were 25 people from the ministry. These I are had technocrats the who, who went to, yes, to more benefit, than that. benefit from the conference. Some from TUC, some from uh, health ministry. Mm -hmm. Some There were more than and, and 200. And nobody has come to speak to you, your group of women. I, when, I, when we came back from the ILO, I went to look at government because that's where I met those I know. Okay. Because after my presentation, they just gave me a handshake 
Juliana, you've done well. You've represented Ghana very well. Then after that, that's the end. When I went to find out that who is in charge of giving us back the education okay. that was told that when you go back, mm. disseminate this information to the informal sector workers, whom we have taken two weeks to stay in ILO. Mm. No education. So I'm just pleading with this present government. Okay. I know uh, mm. President uh, Kufuado is a listening government. We want them to prepare something for us okay. so that we'll go through this education of formalizing us right. so that we'll do things right. We'll not fall in the, into the trap. Mm. Whenever there is an increase of VAT or any other thing, mm. we'll get some education Prof. and then give us a desk Prof, is to speak it, to our issues. Is, is this, we have a lot. Is this not sad and it is. a threat to our economy that the people who generate the chunk of money mm. are left behind sure. in, like you're saying, <laughs> they are left behind. This, this is this is clearly sad that we have gone to ILO to discuss formalization of the informal sector, and people have sat on the documents, mm. they sat on the knowledge, mm. and they are wearing suit and tie with it. Yes, yes, Prof. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, it's not the best. Uh, I, I think the essence of economic management is to benefit those who participate in that economy. Mm. Um, and if uh, these people are not just human beings in the economy, but they are productive human beings mm. in the economy, it is all improper that economic management benefits them, mm. not only in terms of uh, education. Uh, in fact, the education, we don't even do it properly. Mm. So we uh, quality education for uh, the informal sector. Okay. In fact, so when that quality education is done, mm -hmm. uh, those people who we even think they are in the informal sector are running away from taxation. Mm. They may come to the realization that after all, uh, I give, I take. Mm. I give, I take. Right. If I have a real working, I contributed to it. Mm. Uh, if I have an efficient public transport system, uh, I also contribute uh, to it. Mm. Uh, so that is how it's supposed to be. And nobody should uh, deceive himself that because taxation is grounded in law, it's compulsory. Therefore, people will voluntarily be paying taxes mm. when they, they don't see benefit. Mm. So the moment we enhance the benefit, uh, whether the person is the informal sector or not, the person will be incentivized. Is it a, a problem that the concept of big manism is, is worrying us? We are looking down on the informal sector and we are looking at the people in suit and tie and we think that they are a better option than the informal sector. Is that our problem? Well, I think the problem is uh, we lack reorientation. Mm. So, uh, for example, if you are a professor, uh, if you come to help, some other person will need to give you orientation. Right. So you may be a big man in the office. Mm. You will need orientation by somebody. In fact, that is the essence of even going to those uh, 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 workshops or conferences right. in internationally. But because nobody accounts for why you go for a conference, mm. uh, so you go to conference and come, nobody put uh, pressure on you or demand from you that give us a uh, an action report right. and add an action plan to it okay. for implementation. So mm. people go to those places as part of the enjoyment of mm. their offices. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so that is why. But I think we can orient ourselves mm. better that any time that uh, we participate in those programs, it is because we want to learn something mm. to come and uh, implement. And not only uh, that mm. to foster their work, but their health is equally uh, important. important. Mm -hmm. So we, we need to do that. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, discussing the 2019 media budget here becomes very significant when we are talking about this thing because if you look at the cover page of the, the budget, mm -hmm. it tells you that we have integrated the ideals of the uh, sustainable development goals. Right. And one of the sustainable development goals is uh, 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 so, clean water, mm, sanitation. Exactly. Do we have water in the markets? Mm. <laughs> conducive place, conducive mm. place mm. Uh, to work in, etc. These are the people generating our revenue. Uh, uh, so Julie, we, we, <laughs> so that is why when he, she said, we speak big English GDP and, mm, mm. and the rest. GDP that does not reflect 
on those ideals. Exactly. Uh, it's meaningless to them. It's meaningless, it's meaningless to, to them. them. So I think we should work assiduously I see. to ensure that those uh, ideals that we have captured mm. from the, uh, the sustainable development goals into our budget okay. uh, actually uh, get uh, meaning to mm. our people. And, and I'll give you 30 seconds uh, on, on this particular one. The sanitation that uh, Prof talked about. I've taken a trip to all the markets. Kanishi is uh, almost always, you know, uh, dirty, has filled, sitting right in front of the market. Malamata, same. Agbobloshi, same. Alokboshi, same. It's all over the place. How, how so have your women become comfortable with it, even though they pay for the rubbish to be carted away daily, but it's not it's not taken away. The market leadership is yeah, okay. How so? Thank you very much. Uh, I just want to say thank you to our leader in Makola Market, Madam Christiana Lai, okay. who has been bringing the AMA leaders, those who are in charge of markets, right, to come and give us education about how to clean the environment, mm. how you should not litter around. So we have bins in the market now, mm. and a place that was demolished, the AMA has come to fix mm. it. Okay. So I can see that uh, with a good leader, the attention is now coming to us. Formerly, right. when you go to AMA and you report something, nobody okay. cares. Nobody but cares. now the leader okay. has time to f do follow-ups, and right. people are visiting us to know. Right. So the market is changing a bit. Okay. As for Makola, we have a lot of people. Right. We have a lot of old structures, but they are now fixing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you have a good leader who will lead you to so okay. many places that you can find an answer. So the problem is leadership. We we'll, we'll take a break here. When we return, we'll get into some more conversation and a round up to uh, Mr. Ken Oforiata appearing before Parliament today as by law Act 921 to uh, tell us how much he has spent over the last six months, what he has been able to achieve, and an opportunity to review some of the targets that he uh, put together in the 2019 budget, which was announced in 2018. It was said that we're going to have a stronger economy for jobs and prosperity. Do you feel that? 020-21-666-33. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome back and thank you very much. My guest in the studio, Professor John Gachi, he is the head of finance at the University of Cape Coast. He's also an economist and analyst. And Madame Juliana Brown Afari speaks for uh, the Makla Market Women as well. She is a leader of the private, uh, the informal sector. Welcome back, uh, Doc. And Doc, let's now get into the, um, the, the budget proper. Mm -hmm. As was read to us, what has been done so far and what key expectations we all have uh, after half year performance and whether the targets will be changed, whether it will be reviewed, what it is with all the costs. You, you have some pointers to raise and so, and so I'm asking, for example, we have touched on um, previously with our previous guests, we've touched on our Greek, we've touched on maybe we're zero in now and, and talk about uh, the health sector, for example, the government said it was going to provide some 275 uh, ambulances. We're talking about the whole government hospital. We're also talking about the University of Ghana Medical Center, which has been a subject of, uh, you know, a storm. But right now, let's turn attention to Aisha. Aisha has got uh, some messages here that uh, you've been sending on WhatsApp. Aisha, yes, sir. welcome back. Just a couple of uh, messages mm. and then we'll wrap up. Uh, this one says, good morning, Johnny, and to your humble panelists. I don't think that this mid-year budget will do anything for us as Ghanaians. And for that matter, I'm not ready to listen to the killer budget. This government will kill us. Greetings to all the aspirants in the Anglo constituency. It's coming from Kotoka Courage in Angloga in the Volta region. This one says, I expect nothing much than the usual rhetorics, repeated failure, and just coming to sing praises for the president and his vice uh, president as well. This is coming from Abladi, from Ifekuma Zongu Takrade. Um, the next one says, I, don't, I think the finance minister must scrap off the luxury cars levy in terms of fuel capacity. It is so worrying that we spend CDs and yet the authorities read budgets in dollars. And he says, hmm, I'm a Ghana. It's coming from Augustine from Kwapong. 
Paul from Adenta says government should stop politicizing the energy sector, especially with our electricity, and let the PURC do their work. Scoring political points with the reduction of electricity tariffs does the country no good, and with time you will be exposed. We shall strengthen our institutions by allowing them to work without interference, but with effective supervision, uh, supervision for the best of our country, Ghana. This is coming from Rex Nyako. He says, actually, what we are praying uh, now uh, is for the for it to be maintained no increment and no reduction and we all know that doom so is somehow a thing of the past but if ECG if, or PDS wants to turn off the power source for one reason or the other I think there should be some announcement but these days it does not happen they turn it off anytime they want I'm pleading with government to check that for us so we know what time it gets turned off. Uh, to get stable power supply, we need to pay realistic tariffs, which should be, which should be re uh, reasonable enough. This current government is up to task, and we believe in President Nanado. This is coming from Yusuf uh, Mohammed. Uh, Johnny, we are not ready to pay any increments for whatever realistic price they are talking of. It was a campaign promise, and so they should fulfill it. Manike sends this one from Atonsu Kuwait. Johnny, the issue of electricity is not the matter of enjoying subsidies, but rather the efficiency, re uh, reliability, and sustainability of power supply to we, the customers. If you enjoy subsidies, but efficiency is low, the value is the same. I'd rather pay a reasonable tariff to enjoy efficiency and reliability. It's coming from Bellot, and he sent that one from the Northern region. Hi, TV3, please, good morning. I disagree with the collapse of the banks by the government because people lost their livelihoods. I think the government should have rather sacked the top officers and allowed uh, the low-key staff who knew nothing about these used to work. Those banks should have been allowed to survive with the same money used to consolidate them. Uh, it could have been used to save the banks and staff, uh, but now the staff is home. It is coming from a former staff member of one of the banks that was collapsed. Uh, his name is Paul, and he sent that one from Bulga. So those were some of the messages okay. we received. Thoughts there. They, obviously, you don't want an increment in your ECG tariffs. Uh, you don't want to pay more, but you, you want to enjoy. Uh, bef before we go to Prof, Madam, let me come to you. And uh, Guta has been up in arms with their Nigerian counterparts recently. Um, the law is clear, the GIPC law is clear, as to who can do retail business and who cannot do retail business. But it does appear that we've had a lot of uh, foreigners doing retail business. Is, do you have that situation at Mokala as well? We do. And we are in solidarity with the Guta people. If you come to Makola market now, formerly, when our parents used to be in the market, the market owners used to be the indigenous of Greater Accra. Mm. But as time went on, it has mixed up a bit with okay. people from the Ashanti and all over the world. What is troubling me now is now the old ones are leaving the market because their businesses have been collapsed right. with uh, 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 fake goods coming mm. into the system, mm. bringing the goods without distributing it, sit in the market and do the retail mm. themselves. It's worrying us because mm. they used to bring the goods and distribute it to the market women. Okay. Then maybe in the afternoon, they will come back for their money. Mm. But now they are acquiring the shops themselves, mm. of which is not right. Those who own the shops are not supposed to give it to the, those uh, uh, distributors. Mm. They are supposed to be maintained by Let's Ghanaians. Let's talk about fronting, that some of yes. the people are fronting for them, yes. which is an offense. It is. We are losing the market. Makola market is going to be left with Foreigners, Togolese, and Cote d'Ivoire, and uh, Nigerians, and all that. That if the government doesn't look at that situation for us, by the time we realize we will not get any Ghanaian woman in Makola. That market is supposed to be there for Ghanaians. Mm. So that when you bring your goods, do the distribution. Go and sit somewhere. When it's time for you to collect your money, then you come for the money. But you don't take over the shops. Those who are selling to the foreigners, mm -hmm. I blame them. Because okay. any foreigner will not come and just come and take over your shop. 
It is you who are selling to the person. Right. So the, the authorities should look at these things, mm. should locate the market leaders, so that we will sit and talk about this. Mm. That, as I said, that if we have a desk somewhere, all these issues will be channeled there. Right. That Ghanaians are not supposed to sell the, mm. the, the shops to the foreigners okay. to come and take over. We will complain, but we ourselves are selling it to the, the foreign. They cannot force us to sell our shops. <sighs> so the authorities should look at it so that we will not lose. Otherwise, my child will not come back to Makola Market. By the time it gets to my child, that I have taken over from my, my mother. Mm. My mother didn't sell the shop, left it for me to come and take over mm. because I couldn't finish my university graduate. I find myself in Makola Market, but I'm also helping the little I learned. I'm also helping our colleagues to also go through capacity buildings to be able to speak to the issues that is affecting our sector. Right. It is where we find ourselves. Mm. It is our office, our mm. business. Mm. That's where we earn our living. That's where I look after my three boys mm. who have finished university wow. in Makola Market. <sighs> so uh, we are pleading with the authorities mm. who, who are in charge of informal sector market women. We don't know. Okay. I'll, I'll keep on talking about those who are in charge of informal sector market women. Sometimes sure, you don't know where I'm, to channel. I'm sure they have heard you. Prof, it's very sad. Prof, it's coming for me now. What does it mean for a country to lose its retail market to, to foreigners? Uh, what are the adverse effects? Well, I think the adverse effects are very clear, as she articulated. It means that with time, some people will not be in the market again. Uh, I think we also need to be very clear that in our uh, investment laws, uh, it is very clear where foreigners are supposed to operate and where they are not supposed to operate. Right. Uh, but there have been some development over time. Uh, some have married Togolese, some have married uh, Nigerians. Mm. So, um, infiltrating into our system become easier. Mm. So some of these people, do you treat them as Nigerians or as Ghanaians entering the market because their husbands are supporting them? Mm. So these are emerging uh, issues that I think, like mm. she, she was saying, mm. if we have some... But I, I, I believe uh, for this particular one, uh, I think the trade ministry have been uh, uh, the one who was dealing with these matters right. when they, they, they come up. Mm. So I think the engagement should continue okay. uh, within the framework of our laws mm. and within the framework of ECOWAS protocol. Okay. So that is what I think uh, we, should, we, should, we should be doing. Okay. But we should, we should, we should clearly know that mm. it's not merely a, a matter of law now, okay. but it's, a, it's also a matter of integration right. where our people come uh, to our, our mm. country. Mm. They are not entering the market because they are foreigners, okay. but some of them are entering because they have become part of the Ghanaian family. Okay, they have become consanguines. <laughs> anyway, let, let's now look at the expected focus of the media review. Last year, the finance minister set some targets. He spoke about the overall real GDP growth for some 7.6%. He spoke about non-oil real GDP growth for some 6.2%. He will talk about end period inflation of 8.0%, uh, fiscal deficit of 4.2% of the GDP, a primary support of 1.2% of the the GDP and the gross international reserves to cover not less than 3.5 months of imports uh, of goods and services. Prof, this is what the finance minister told us that, look, all things being equal, this is what we are going to be able to do. How fear has gone already? What do you see? Are we on track? Are we, are we sliding into the bush? Are we retrogressing? Where are we? Well, uh, I think per the economic and financial data released by Bank of Ghana, uh, last week or so, mm. uh, capture some of these things. Uh, I think f for GDP, okay. uh, we are doing uh, uh, well okay. in terms of uh, uh, working within the target for the first and second quarter. Mm. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, inflation, we are within single digit, mm. but as to whether we are going to meet the uh, the eight percent plus or not, mm -hmm. uh, we are yet to see. Of course, uh, we do know there have been some increases.
in tariff, mm. in uh, uh, electricity, water, uh, and, and also fuel. And some of these things may continue. Mm. So we have what we call a pass-through effect. Uh, depending on the strength, the pass-through effect can uh, take two months okay. to go, and those things will influence prices, mm. and they will also influence uh, future inflation. Okay. So we don't know how the situation will be mm. uh, like. Uh, if the hint given by people close to government is true about uh, increase in electricity tariff, mm. tariff uh, then you could see that we may be moving towards upward trajectory that may influence upward development in inflation. Mm -hmm. But even that announcement itself is problematic. problematic why, why so? Yeah, problematic because I indicated earlier that the 2019 budget now, because the president is a co-chair mm. of part of the sustainable development exactly. group, and of course that is what is expected for all countries mm. uh, to inculcate the ideals of the sustainable development goal in the management of their economies. Right. We have decided to inculcate that in our 2019 budget to guide us. For the first time. Now, goal 16 talk about peace, justice, and strong institutions. Mm. It is the duty of PURC to determine whether there is good reason to increase tariff or not. So if that would be a matter for announcement in budget, mm. that is undermining the institution. Ha has the PURC ever uh, done a tariff review downwards before? It always ends up going up. Even <laughs> if, if, if that is the case, because their job is not to reduce tariff or increase well, it. Well, tariff their adjustment, job, prof, their, you know, yes, could come down job, to go up. Yeah, their it's job, never gone down before. It yeah, always goes up. Yeah, because they look at input. So if the input in the country indicate that it should continue to go up, mm. it will go up. So, so, the, so quest, the question comes up then, uh, are illegal connections. There's a bus pipe of water running for, for days. Um, people are connecting illegally. Um, a lot of money is owed, as Anas Arabi Anas will show us, you know, to PDS or ECGN by major corporations that they owe money. Go and collect the money and be able to run. Government itself owes PDS a lot of money. If you are not looking at all these things to make sure that the, the system is running efficiently, how does the simple guy who has one bulb, one fan, a small TV set, be the one at the receiving end of PRC's upward adjustment. So unfair, all all, all those things are a reflection mm. of inefficiency of management, uh, wastage in the system. And because we want to uh, assuage uh, the people, then we jump over the institutions mm. who are supposed to look at the factors and determine. Okay. Then we go ahead to make a statement that entangles the institution. Right. And that is the, the weakening of institution mm. I'm talking about. Mm. Meanwhile, in our 2019 budget, Goal 16, we say we are going to ensure right. that we have peace, we have mm. justice, mm. and we have strong institutions. So, so depoliticize some of these things. Exactly. Mm. Uh, but it's becoming very difficult to depoliticize. Why so? Be yeah, because <laughs> if the system is inefficient, mm. okay, uh, wastage is rampant. Mm. Uh, why do we spend money to construct road? Then the next day, we have to cut that road mm -hmm. and we will not face it back to the standard because we need to uh, uh, pass a pipe, a pipe, a pipe there, mm -hmm. etc. Those are inefficiency uh, in the public administration system. Right. So if we don't correct all those things, they contribute. And the, the management of the economy also contributes. Mm -hmm. Definitely, if uh, e, uh, ECG or PDS, PDS has to borrow money at a huge cost to do the operation. That will reflect in pricing. Okay. Uh, if um, um, you ha they have to import something and the exchange rate uh, is highly volatile, mm. it will reflect in the tariff they need to, they need to charge. Okay. So therefore, you cannot uh, merely uh, uh, use an announcement to uh, 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 what of these real factors that mm. underpin mm. determination of tariff mm. uh, in the country. So we will continue to be covering up. Uh, could, could, it, could it also be that there might have been some consultations before the announcement was made? Yeah, that consultation wouldn't be interference because... <laughs>
Okay. That is not the it job. It's not the job of government. But we also need to admit that government is a key stakeholder. Okay. So the process is that PRC will engage all those stakeholders. Okay. But one stakeholder cannot uh, gazump the, the regulator. Exactly. So that, that that's where the problem is. Okay. But that, so that mm, sorry, sorry about that. So I was just building my my point. Mm. But I think beyond uh, GDP being on target and the rest. When you look at uh, the, uh, the economic and financial data released by Bank of Ghana, even though we expect to have a primary balance uh, to be uh, 1.2, 1 .2, that is positive. Right. Surplus. Uh, they gave a figure up to March 2019. Mm -hmm. I don't know why they are not able to give us a figure up to uh, June, June okay. which is under consideration. Mm -hmm. And that figure is showing negative. Okay, mm. that figure is showing negative because the primary balance is relate uh, your your income mm. that you are earning to uh, your expenditure, excluding uh, payment on the uh, interest payment. Okay, so that uh, is worrying mm. because where we want to go, we are not getting there. Right. Uh, if you look at the budget itself, wages and salary. Mm. It's estimated to cost about 19.4 billion Ghana cities. That's and a huge chunk of yes. But but the people, if people are working, they are productive. They are adding to <laughs> the or, or, or forward much of the economy. Mm. That is not a problem. But the problem is what I'm going to talk about. Tell me. The interest cost mm. is 18.6 billion, right. almost equivalent to approximately. The same as uh, mm, wages and wage bill. Mm. That is problematic, right? Now, beyond that, the interest payment estimated for 2019 mm. is more than twice the commitment to capital investment. Mm. Capital investment. Mm. So uh, you see, the the, uh, uh, the capital expenditure is 8.5 billion. Okay. So if you already have interest payment which is far above mm. to, more than twice commitment to capital investment okay you already have a problem mm. so and then your your your, your revenue mobilization is underperforming mm. all that you are left with is to borrow more so that is why if at the end of mm. may our borrowing has gone to 200 billion mm. it is not surprising that, that's that's not good it is not good, but it's not surprising. Because we're going to pay over time. Yes. And it means that we're going to be working from hand to mouth. Yes. That's how we're going to be living. Yes. So if you are borrowing that much, mm. by your commitment to uh, 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 infrastructure, for mm. example, in the country, mm. is just $8.5 billion. Okay. By your commitment to uh, interest payment, uh, cumulative, cumulatively, is 18.6. You have a problem. Is it a question of value addition to, for example, our raw materials where we need to stop exporting everything? We pick it from the market, we push it out there, and we are not adding value to it. To, to and for example, the the world's biggest uh, earners in terms of cocoa, uh, Germany, Switzerland, Canada, they, they don't have a single cocoa tree there. We generate all the cocoa, they take all the money, the hundred billion dollars that's made, and we get only two billion dollars in Africa. That's that's trouble, troubling. Well, that is also reflected in the economic and financial data. If you look at the external development, you will realize that non-oil import alone, mm. when you put the export value of gold and cocoa okay. together, the non-import value is more than those two put together. Wow. If you also put gold and oil t together, the export proceed is less than the import uh, 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 value for non-oil uh, 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 commodities. And mind you, the basket of agricultural produce in the non-oil import has gone up significantly now. Mm. So these are the real issues we should be dealing with. Okay. And, and remember, nobody is forcing you not to do those things that you just mentioned. Mm. That is how we want to manage our economy. Okay. We are talking about growth is on target. Mm. But that growth, the trajectory is not different from the growth that we experienced from 2014 up to today. Okay. Because these growths are all 
driven by one sector. I'm not saying that other sectors don't contribute to growth, but mm. hugely driven by one sector, the extractive sector, the natural resource sector. And, and we could so have the Dutch disease. That is why we describe that growth to be non-inclusive. And we could have the Dutch disease, by the way. Uh, well, the Dutch disease is a concept of, uh, on its own. Mm. Uh, it relates to uh, issue like uh, exchange rate, mm. etc. So I don't want to be discussing the Dutch disease just because uh, uh, more of activity is coming from the extractive sector. Okay. It goes beyond that. Mm. Okay. Madam, do you feel this growth, the figures that are being mentioned, uh, you said that GDP and the rest were big, big English. <laughs> you need education, but let's beat it down. Do you feel the growth that is being mentioned? How do your people in the market feel? <laughs> Someone just sent a message to me. She said, Auntie Julie, can you please ask the finance minister the reason why when an informal sector worker goes to the bank for loan, mm. they will ask the person to bring a collateral. But when you are working with the government, you get free loan. You, we don't understand you, you that. You want to understand that? Yes. You, th you think it's because discrimination? An informal worker is also a worker. Right. That's you can be easily located in the market. Mm. So if you give a loan to that person, the person will pay it back. And if you are looking for the person, you can locate the person. Maybe, I mean, past experiences have taught them that, look, uh, you must be careful. I mean, we live in a country where so you go to the bank to go and look for a loan, and they give you a paper and pen to draw a map to your house. <laughs> So if an informal sector worker who is part of the economy don't understand one or two things, okay. it's about time the government take the informal sector worker seriously. And what we don't understand, you explain it to us. Are you feeling the growth? If I have my money, okay. that the government didn't give me that money, I pay daily toll out of it, okay. quarterly out of it, mm. and yearly out of it. And if that money goes down, my business goes down, and I go to bank for additional support okay. and you ask me to bring collateral why my market money is less than what you are asking for mm. and i don't understand we need more explanation from those i don't know who is responsible for the informal again sector. you don't know yes <laughs> because we have a lot of issues that we can share experiences mm -hmm. and ideas mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. if we are really also workers of this economy okay there should be a platform, there should be a table, there should be a discussion about informal sector issues. Mm. I have a book. If I bring it here, I will not finish reading it. What's inside the book? Our issues. Okay. Issues affecting us. Cross-border issues. Okay. Uh, gender issues. Mm. Uh, things that unlawful collection of uh, uh, taxes and things, mm. a whole lot of things. Unlawful collection of taxes. Yes. When you go to a, a, a barrier, when you are crossing from Togo coming, there's okay. a lot of barriers on the right, way right. that when you stop, you have to pay something. That mm. is unlawful. If the person has been able to pay the tax or tow at the border, right. crossing coming to Accra, mm. should be free. You shouldn't pay anything else again. <sighs> you understand? There, there are so many things so that many we don't things. understand. So we need many. education. Okay. They so should use some of our daily tolls money to educate us so that we will also be part of the economy. And that's so, what you want the finance minister to do? The finance minister should talk about giving loans to the market women to okay. boost their businesses. Okay. Not only the fish, fishermen and the farmers. Uh, the, farmers. Okay. the market women who go to those farmers to buy their products are also part of the economy. Okay. They should have a, 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 a budget for us. I hear you. Final <laughs> question. Would you want to pay more for electricity? Yes, sir. Well, electricity is part of the our day-to-day -day activities. Okay. If we have electricity every day, that if we have a frozen meat, it will not destroy, and we have to pay for it, we will pay for it. We've been paying all kinds of monies that we don't know where that money goes. Okay. So we are ready. All right. And I want to <laughs> congratulate uh, Madam who won the award. Okay. Frima Ose Opare. Okay. We are with you. All women congratulate you, and also the first lady of this republic, okay. Madam Rebecca Ekufuadu, thank you very much. Prof, let's wrap up. Uh, front page BNFT says uh, we're highly exposed to capital flight risk. The fact that well, we have a lot of people who come in here, uh, they do business here, they are quoting figures in dollars, they finish 
they repatriate all their funds to their country in dollars. It has adverse effect on us. The finance minister is going to talk about, uh, he spoke about strengthening our currency as well. They, never mind that the, the CD against the dollar is some 5.42, but your closing thoughts in, in summary. Well, I this, think this is it, the CD against the dollar. Uh, I think these are not matters we should be discussing. Why not? Yeah, because it's in our our, our exchange <laughs> laws mm. that uh, we use Ghana cities for transactions within Ghana. The, the government quotes dollars to and us. And if you want to, there is any any reason why you should do that, you mm. ask permission from Bank of Ghana. It's the very government, clear. The government itself is so if the Bank of Ghana <laughs> is not able to enforce, mm. the government itself is the is the worst offender by quoting contracts. Mm. Uh, in dollars, which those contracts are domestic contracts executed by Ghanaians, mm. are quoted in dollar. How will you implement this? And of course, we all travel. <laughs> we all travel. We know you don't do that in South Africa. Right. You don't do that in UK. You don't do that in <laughs> Kenya, Uganda. Yeah, they would demand things. for their shilling and their so, rent. So, so these are the problems. So, uh, sometimes when we over politicize economic issues, mm. You know, some time ago we were told that dollarization is not a problem for Ghanaian economy, right. even though it's in our, in right. our laws. In our laws yes. But because of political expediency, mm. we say that it's not a problem. Mm. But now, how do we, how do we go about it? <sighs> so, so these are issues. So they are not issues we should be talking about. They, they are things that we should just do. Legislation should deal with it. The legislation is there. It's there. The enforcement is there. But if government stops, others will stop. Okay. Professor John Gachi, thank you very much for your time, sir. It's been amazing having you around. Always a pleasure. He is the head of finance at the University of uh, Cape Coast. And, uh, when you say head of finance, you are giving somebody... Finance, having a party at the University of Cape Coast. And, uh, Madame Juliana um, uh, Brown Ferry speaks for the Makala women and also the informal sector. Madam, thank you very much for coming. Auntie Julie, most grateful. We will go to Parliament shortly because the Finance Minister is set to address all of us about uh, the performance of the government, the 2019 budget which was announced to us. Uh, half year has gone already. The seventh month is almost done. But what has he to show? Well, we'll bring you all the fine detail here on TV3 across our media general platforms on 3FM 92.7, on Unia 95.1 FM, Connect FM 97.1 in Takradi and 3news.com. Stay with us.